Hi, I wish all of you a happy carnival of planting. My name is Alex, I'm from Germany, and I'm the face behind Carnivores Carnival on Instagram. Today I would like to show you how I grow Mexican pinguicula in our living room. Since we don't have a garden or a greenhouse, I'm forced to grow those plants indoors, which can, especially in winter, cause some problems, especially with temperature. And I want to show you today what I exactly do. I grow these plants since 2021 and Mexican pingucula became my main focus. I like to do terrariums or as you can see here planted rocks because Mexican pingucula can basically grow on and in everything. Um, today I would like to show you what conditions my plants are growing in, what lights I'm using, what watering method I use, and what media I use. I would say, let's get started, and I'll show you a little bit around in my shell. This is my little corner in, the, in our living room, and in this left shelf, I basically have praying mantises and jumping spiders, and this big shelf right now is my entire grow area. As you can see, I have all kinds of carnivorous plants and displays, like nepenthes, seedlings, pygmy sundews, sundews, um, some bladderworts, utricularia, and sundews, um, and also some heliumphora and cephalotus. But today, we want to talk about Mexican pinguicula. As you can see, I have a pretty decent collection of Mexican pinguicula for the two and a half years I'm doing that hobby. And most Mexican pinguicula have two kinds of leaf forms, which are the summer leaf form, which is carnivore, carnivorous, and a succulent winter leaf form, which is non-carnivorous like this Pinguicula tibertiana. Right now, most of those plants are still in their succulent leaf form and they will switch the leaf form within the next four to six weeks. That all is depending on light, watering and temperature. About the light, I use Spider Farmer SF600 grow lights. They have a full spectrum, run under 74 watt. And the duration of those grow lights vary depending on the season so by the end of November I go down from 14 and a half hours of light to 12 hours every week I reduce the timer by 30 minutes and by end of April I increase the light again by 30 minutes each week until I'm back on 14 and a half hours every day. Mexican pinguicula are, compared to other carnivorous plants, not so much dependent on light, at least not on strong lights, but of course you can see a big difference between a plant which just grows on a windowsill and a plant which grows on a grow lights. On a windowsill, you rarely get colors like this. The plants stay a little bit more green, but I figured that they grow a little bit faster and stronger. So you have to find a balance, how strong your lights have to be. What you always can do is you can put the lights higher from the plants so that they get less intense light. In my opinion, the most important part of growing all kinds of plants, no matter if carnivorous plants or non-carnivorous plants is, especially when it's indoor, to have airflow. For that, I have multiple fans in my shelf installed, which prevent the constant airflow every time the lights are on. That helps you to prevent especially rot in the plants. It helps with the pink uricula to have the top layer of the media always dry while the bottom has enough moisture for the plants left over. With 
changing the duration of my grow lights, I also changed the watering method. From end of November until end of April, I water my plants with a simple squeeze bottle. I go gently around the plant, which provides them with enough water. And combined with the airflow, you won't have as much rotted plants as without. That's why I think airflow is an important subject in growing those plants. Um, what we want to accomplish or what I want to accomplish in winter is to trigger the plants to switch their leaf form. And since I cannot go down in the temperature, uh, I have to do it with light and watering. And as soon as the light duration is less and I water less, most of the plants are switching their leaf form. And right now we are at the time that I'm increasing the watering again. The light will be increased soon. And then I will water those trays with about one centimeter of water. Um, let all the pots soak up the water and then I wait two or three days until I water again. You can also always lift up a pot to see how heavy it is. If it's pretty light, then you should consider watering again. If it's still a little bit heavy, maybe just wait another day. As you can see here, I have also some terrariums completely filled with Mexican pinguicula and other plants like Uticularia ferns and Tilsensia. Here I have a Uticularia pink Uricula moss display, which is growing on a drift piece of driftwood, a huge helium for a heterodoxa X minor. And what I want to explain next is the propagation method I'm using. As you can see, I have lots of different sizes of little deli cups. And what I do is I use my Mexican pink uicula substrate to add some in the deli cup. I spray the media once or twice so that it's slightly moist. And I just put the leaves on the soil. Don't I don't um, pluck them in the soil. Then I leave this container closed. And about Three to five weeks later, I have little plants growing. These little plants, plantlets, offshoots, will come into my Mexican Pinguicula kindergarten. As you can see, I have a lot of tags with numbers because I made a list where I note down which plant it is, which plant. And here the plants grow until they have the size to go out of that. And then they usually go in normal pots or in small containers like that. So the propagation of Mexican pinguicula is pretty easy. You can use the summer and the winter leaves for it. I personally like to use the summer leaves. My success rate is much higher, um, but both works pretty good. What I explained earlier in the beginning is I have a a love for little displays like here I have Pinguicula Elersiae, Yalmamensis and Cyclosecta growing on snail shells surrounded by Uterocularia livida and that shows that those plants can and will grow on basically everything so it's not like a fly trap where you should use only distilled water um, you can use tap water. I personally don't do it. I use reverse osmosis water. And in a terrarium like this, you should always consider to water a little bit less than usual, especially in the winter time, so that you can also trigger the succulent leaf form in those plants. But as you can see, everything in it is thriving. The watering is reduced right now and will be also increased by end of April.
This is my standard Mexican pinguicula mix, which contains about 60% vermiculite, and then each 10% perlite, pumice sand, coarse pumice, and clay. We here in Germany call it ceramis. In the US it might be turfis, which is an equ equivalent to ceramis. Um, all of those ingredients of the media give you a, a not too fine and not too coarse mix of media and all of them have the ability to hold and release water on different levels which also helps your plants to survive a day or two longer without sitting in water. To summarize all of it I can always say most important part airflow, second most important part lights, third most important part, media, and then the watering method. When you have airflow, usually you don't get rot plants. When you watch your plants and listen to them, as funny as that sounds, um, you will also reduce the risks of rotting like if I would put this Pinguicula debertiana, which is in succulent leaf form, uh, in a tray of water and would let it sit in water, it would eventually die and rot. So if you see signs like this here, this plant wants to tell me, I want to go into my succulent leaf form right now, then you have to water it less. And keep in mind, those plants sometimes do stuff when they are not supposed to do it. Like in summer they go into their succulent leaf form and in winter they go into their carnivorous leaf form. Always consider that, especially with the watering, and then everything should be fine. At the end I would like to say what I said in the beginning. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it works for you. Online there are out many guides for taking care of those plants and you should always find your best way Which takes a little time But after a while you will figure it out. You will figure out how to water your plants what lights they need and What temperatures they need and then I'm pretty sure you will have success in growing those plants. I hope you all had fun watching this video and with this zoom out I'm saying bye and have a nice carnivorous plant day. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society or ICPS not only love these plants but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.